Thank you all so much for joining us for our third night of celebrating the 279th anniversary of the founding of Moravian College. For those of you who have joined us the other two nights, I'm sorry that I'm going to repeat the same little reminders today, but for those of you who are new, thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Amanda Manza. I'm a member of the class of 2013 and the graduate program in 2017, and I serve Moravian as the Director of Alumni and Parent Engagement. I want to say a quick thank you to Justin Dorenzis, our Assistant Director of Alumni and Parent Engagement, for putting tonight's event together. He's the one who would have sent you all the links and all that good stuff, so thank you, Justin, for putting this whole week together. We've really appreciated it. Before we get started, just a couple housekeeping items. Tonight's event is being recorded, as you may have just heard, so if you would not like your image to appear on anything, please make sure you do turn your camera off. I'm going to ask that everybody keep themselves muted during the presentations and when others are talking, just to help cut down on that background noise. And after the presentation, we will open up the session for a question and answer, so if you have a question, feel free to put it in the chat and Justin will actually read those out after we're all wrapped up with the presentations. I'd now like to introduce our first pre presenter for the night. It's Victoria Vargas from the class of 2021. She's just about to graduate, almost there. Um, so we're super excited to hear a little bit of her story tonight. Victoria? Hi, thank you so much, Amanda. Um, so I have a presentation to share with you all. Um, just double checking, you all can see my screen, right? Perfect. Um, so yeah, I'm Victoria Vargas. I'm a senior here at Moravian and I'm majoring in biology. So this is just a little bit about um, my past four years, what I've done and kind of where I'm going. So I was born in New Jersey, but I really grew up in Easton. So I graduated from Easton High School. I was class of 2017. Throughout high school, I was a member of the marching band. I played the trombone. It was as big as me. Um, I was a part of a bunch of science fairs and I volunteered in my community. I volunteered at the hospital and then at soup kitchens. And then after I graduated, I started my Moravian journey. And when I started, I was hoping to be pre-med, well, I was pre-med, and then I was going to major in neuroscience, but that, that changed along the way. Um, so why Moravian? I really wanted to go to a small school and a liberal arts school really, because I didn't want to be stuck into one thing. I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't, I wasn't hundred percent on neuroscience and I didn't want to just be a number. So I didn't want to go to a big state school. I really wanted to get to know my professors, my peers, all of that stuff. Um, Ravian really emphasized that there was a lot of flexibility to change your mind and explore all of the opportunities that they had. And I really liked that. And it was local. I said I grew up in Easton and it's only about 20 minutes away from Moravian. So I commuted for a bunch of reasons and it just kind of checked all the boxes. Um, one of the biggest boxes, of course, when it comes to college was affordability. Um, and based off all of the scholarships that I received, Moravian was actually a lot more affordable than state schools. So that was really awesome. And I have listed a couple of the scholarships that I was really gracious to like receive. Um, I received the Andrea Kretz Scholarship and the presidential scholarship, both of which help cover a large chunk of my tuition. And then something that I will discuss later on was I had the privilege to study abroad in Costa Rica. And that trip was also thanks to the scholarships that I did receive. So over my four years, I got involved. Um, I held a work study job for the past four years. I started in the biology department as an animal caretaker. And then from there, I worked my way up to kind of a biology departmental aid. So I just kind of help out wherever, whenever I um, feed animals, clean turtle tanks, prep labs, clean equipment, everything and everything. I just really like kind of being around the department, the professors, the atmosphere. Uh, and then this past year or so, I started TAing for microbiology and biochemistry. And that has been a really great experience because I loved both of those classes. And then I started learning about my sophomore year. I learned about the research that uh, Moravian does on campus. So I got involved in that. Um, I started with an independent study and now I'm working on an honors project. And then something else that Moravian really encourages is giving back to the community. And over the three years or four years, I guess, um, I participated in Heritage Day. So I 
started at Liberty High School. I talked to the high school students there about Moravian and then opportunities outside of college because, you know, it's not for everybody and that's perfectly okay. So it was really great getting to know the community and talking to them and just kind of getting to know them. And then I also, I believe last year it was, I was a part of blanket making. So that was for a bunch of different organizations in the community, which was extremely rewarding. And of course, I joined a couple of clubs. I was pre-med, so I joined the pre-health club, and that was a great place to get connected with all of the opportunities that they have there. I joined the American Chemical Society Club, ACS. Um, I'm not a chem major, but I just really liked it. I liked seeing all of the, um, they also do a lot of outreach with the community. They do tutoring and all of that stuff. It was really cool, it was really fun. And then I joined the Undergraduate Research Club, which is something that's really near and dear to my heart because it was something that I started to build and I really loved. Um, and then I just have listed two of the honor societies that I'm a part of, Omicron Delta Kappa, which is the honor society on campus, and then Phi Eta Sigma, which is another honor society for first year students. So that's just a little bit about what I've done so far on campus. Um, so my Undergraduate Research Club that I mentioned, I joined my sophomore year. At that time, it was kind of just getting its feet rolling, getting established on campus. And towards the end of my sophomore year, they were looking for someone to fill the shoes of vice president. So I volunteered. I said, yeah, sure, why not? Um, and I really liked it. I really liked that the overall goal of the club was to make research accessible to people outside of the typical biology, chemistry, physics, math, that kind of stem -y world that you think of when you think of research. Um, what Moravian also does is that there's research opportunities in art, in English, in education, nursing, all over. And all of the professors and departments are really eager to help you find out what you're passionate about and really connect you with the right professors. So the overall goal of the club was to build those connections, build those bridges, and kind of just provide another opportunity that not many people knew about at the time. So I really loved that. I became president and super involved. And as of now, I'm no longer the president because I'm graduating, but the club is in its third year and it's really exciting and I'm hopeful to see where it goes and I hope it just keeps growing. So obviously I was in the research club, so I was a part of research, am a part of research. Um, so I mentioned I started my independent study, so I took that for credit uh, my junior year, which meant that it counted towards my biology major. Um, so I started that my junior year, and then that transferred into an honors project, which is a year-long project that I started at the beginning of this year, and now I'm currently working on my thesis, and then I'm going to be defending that thesis in about a week or so from this week, I think. Um, so the overall goal of my project is I'm looking at how cells talk to each other. So cells have a bunch of proteins inside their plasma membrane, and they communicate back and forth. And when they communicate back and forth, there's all these other amino acids kind of hanging off the edge of the membrane. And I'm trying to cause a chemical modification on those um, kind of squiggly ends over here on hanging off the membrane and make them the best that they can be and act as a magnet for this tumor uh, proto-oncogenic, so it causes cancer, protein. And what I'm trying to do is make this squiggly protein the best magnet that it can be so all of these bad proteins clump together. And then what it would be in an actual therapy session is you could take all those clumped proteins and extract them or um, dissolve them in any way possible. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do and I've been working on and it's been a lot of fun. And I have pictured over here in my lab. This is my advisor, Dr. Tevinen. She's wonderful. She's been a great mentor for me over the past two years. And this is us in our our masks, we're smiling under there, I promise. Um, but yeah, it's been a really great time and I've really enjoyed it a lot. So a lot of my time was in the lab and all of that stuff, but I did do things outside of the lab. Um, thanks to Moravian, they have the MAC uh, committee. So there's like the activity people, they plan all these really great trips for everyone on campus. So they planned a couple of trips to New York City. So I went and I saw Aladdin in Broadway um, I also went to the DC Cherry Festival, which was beautiful, would recommend, absolutely stunning. And then I studied abroad in Costa Rica last spring. I believe we came back right at the beginning of March and it was really great. We looked at all the different ecosystems all over the country. It was beautiful, stayed in the rainforest. It was amazing, ate great food. I loved it. It was a wonderful experience. 
So from here, I am graduating in May and I will be starting nursing school over at DeSales University. And that's a really great first step for me. I'm really excited. And my long-term goal where I hope to be in my career is I hope to be a nurse practitioner. I'm not exactly sure in what, but I really know that I want to be a nurse practitioner and be able to provide access to healthcare to individuals who normally wouldn't have that access. So that's something that I'm really passionate about. And thanks to Moravian, I really feel as if I am prepared and confident in every step that I take in the future. And I'm looking forward and grateful for everything that Moravian has given me. And that's it, thank you. Thanks so much, Victoria, that was wonderful. You seem like you've had such a great experience at Moravian and you will definitely have a great future. So we're excited to see where that takes you. Again, if you have questions for Victoria, you can go ahead and put them in the chat and Justin will hold on to those. So once we get to the end, you don't have to remember them uh, through Gabby's presentation. You can just go ahead and put them in there. So we are gonna turn it over now to our second presenter of the night and that's Gabrielle Stanley, also from the class of 2021. Gabby. Hello, um, I'm going to have a little bit of help with going through my slideshow this evening because I am connecting to Zoom from my phone. So, um, hi everybody, my name is Gabrielle Stanley. Um, I am from the class of 2021, so I will be graduating in about a month, um, or exactly a month, which is a little scary, but very exciting. Um, I titled my presentation, How One Class Changed My Life, and you will see why momentarily. Um, okay, can move to the next slide. Just for a little bit of background on me, I grew up in Bethlehem, so I've actually, I've lived here my whole life, so I am a commuter. Um, it was just financially the best option for me to be able to live at home, and, and um, when I live 10 minutes away from the school that I'm going to, it doesn't make much sense to live on campus. Um, but I am majoring in English, and I have a writing arts concentration, and I'm also minoring in theater. Um, just a couple of the things that I do outside of Moravian. I like to write. I write a lot of poetry. I like reading. Um, I volunteer at an animal shelter called the Sanctuary at Hapsville with the cats. There's a picture of me with one of the cats. Um, and, and I also like doing theater. And, and I think I wrote crafting. Yes, I really like doing arts and crafts. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, you can move to the next slide. So the class that I was talking about is called Intro to Writing Arts. And um, basically that class has a lot of introductory information about like rhetoric and writing studies and some of the more like technical aspects of writing. Um, because when I started college, I actually wanted to self-design a major in creative writing. I've always been really interested in writing. I've been writing um, for fun ever since I was like four years old. So um, it's it's been a long time passion of mine. So I took Intro to Writing Arts my first semester at Moravian. Um, and I, uh, my final project for the course was to conduct an ethnographic study of a discourse community, which basically means that I just study the ways that a certain community communicates with each other through writing and, and other forms. Um, so I chose high school teachers. I was interested in seeing if like high school teachers from different disciplines use different methods of communication or use different genres. Um, and that eventually led me to my research. So I did a SOAR project in 2018, which was my first real experience connecting original, original research. I was looking at um, how high school teachers are prepared to teach writing in college, um, but it actually led me to the research that I would continue for the next three years. So you move to the next slide. Um, the big question is what is good writing? Um, and I'm not going to answer it for you right now, but um, I've been focused on this question and um, what can be learned from how students answer it for the last three years. Um, I use a method of qualitative research called grounded theory, um, which basically means that I have a big lump of text. I, I use responses from students for their summer assignment for first year writing where they answer the question, what is good writing? Um, and I look for patterns in there and see what phrases or what subject matter emerges from the data um, over and over again from a number of students to kind of get a general sense of what student conceptions of writing are, what that means in terms of how successful they'll be in college writing, that sort of thing. Um, I've coded approximately 700 student responses using this method over the last three years. Um, 
So <laughs> it, it's, it's been a lot, but um, what's great about the research that I do is that I can actually take it to first year writing instructors at Moravian um, and, and that helps inform them about the conceptions of writing that students have. And um, that can help in first year writing courses so that those conceptions, if, if they are hindering, they can be addressed as early as possible. Um, so if you move to the next slide, uh, my research has given me a lot of really awesome opportunities that I never imagined for myself when I started college. Um, the first of those being that I presented at a national writing studies conference called Four C's um, in 2019. It stands for Conference on College Composition and Communication. Um, it was in Pittsburgh. And that was a, just a really awesome experience to be able to go and, and interact with a bunch of different writing study scholars and sit in on presentations. And um, interestingly enough, I got to see a couple of the people who like wrote the things that I was assigned in class. So that was kind of like a weird starstruck moment. Um, but then um, in the summer of 2019, I did another SOAR project, which um, pursued a, a slightly different line of inquiry. So I was still looking at the good writing responses, but I also wanted to see if students would write according to their own definitions of good writing. So like if they said that, that um, good transitions were important, were they writing and incorporating smooth transitions and stuff like that. Um, and that developed new lines of inquiry that led to my honors project. Um, also during SOAR 2019, I wrote an article that was published in an international writing studies journal called Young Scholars in Writing. And I got to work with my um, personal favorite writing studies scholar on that, which was really, really cool. Um, I also worked as a project leader for a writing studies research seminar alongside Dr. Fodry and Professor Mikovits, um, which helped other students begin writing studies research, which was also really awesome to be able to share something that I'm passionate about and um, teach it to some of my friends. And then we could talk about this kind of stuff outside of class. And I wasn't just like the weird person who was talking about coding anyway. Um, so after that, that turned into my honors project, um, which I turned in my thesis today, which is very exciting. Um, that involved a new approach to coding and introduced biographical student data. So this was more focused on assessing the good writing responses. Um, and seeing if student conceptions of writing were connected to how they performed academically. Um, because stuff like that could, could be interesting in terms of placement and post-secondary success and all that fun stuff. Um, so it's been really, really cool to see how just like one little project blew up into this big thing with so many different opportunities. And um, yeah, it, it's been awesome. Um, so if you go to the next slide, you'll just see a picture of me at Four C's in 2019. Um, that's the poster that I designed. Um, so yeah, that was a really cool experience. You could just skip past that one. I just wanted to show that. Um, so in terms of what my research has given me, um, it's given me passion for a cause that I genuinely believe to be important and um, a sense of purpose as I make active contributions towards that cause. Um, academic writing was something that I never thought I would be interested in in a million years. I left high school with like dreams of becoming a novelist and writing poetry all the time. And I still love those things, but to develop this new passion for, for rhetoric and writing studies and all this stuff and actually become a sort of authoritative voice in that field has been really, really rewarding. Um, and it's just, it, it's crazy to think how all of that came from one class. Um, it also gave me a direction for my life that I did not imagined for myself previously. I'll talk about my future plans in a little bit, but like I said, I used to want to be a novelist <laughs> now. Um, it's also given me invaluable relationship with, relationships with mentors and peers. Um, my advisors, uh, Dr. Fodry and Professor Mikovits have helped me so much throughout the years. Um, and I have no doubts that we'll keep in contact after I graduate. Same goes for my friends that I've met through different rhetoric classes and research. And um, it's just been awesome to connect with people in this way and to talk about something that we're all so passionate about. And of course, um, since I'm about to graduate, I can't help but think about um, what I'm going to be doing for the future. So my research has definitely given me a very nice looking resume, which, you know, can't complain about that. 
So, um, and that picture there is just a picture of, um, sorry, I guess I should, <laughs> I should have talked a bit faster, but the picture on the last slide was just um, the cover of the journal that I was published in. Um, yeah, okay, that's it. Now we can move on. Um, but I did want to acknowledge that I obviously didn't do all of this alone. Like I said, I had a lot of help from my advisors, from my friends, um, but also I pay for college by myself. So I was really, really grateful and really fortunate to receive scholarships in order to be able to go to a four-year school. Um, Moravian was the most affordable option for me. And more specifically, I wanted to give a shout out to Charles Allen Wilma Messix and Ann R. Enright because um, I'm a recipient of scholarships from both of them. And it's just, it's great to be able um, to afford to do what I love. I mean, I do work uh, while going to school, but um, with um, support like this, it helps for me to not be focusing on working so much and focus more on my schooling. Um, so if you move to the next slide, you'll see my future plans. So I am taking a break before going to graduate school because as you might imagine, undergrad was a little bit intense. Um, but during this time, I plan to work in freelance writing so that I can gain some professional experience um, because in a couple of years, I want to go to grad school to obtain a master's degree in rhetoric and composition. And then I wanna start working in higher education and eventually work on earning my doctorate. Um, and I think the period of time working in freelance writing will be really important for me when I eventually get into a college level classroom to be able to share professional experience um, outside of higher education with my future students. Um, so that's about it. Um, thank you for listening and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much, Gabby. It's awesome to kind of see the transformative experience that you've had at your time at Moravian. So we're also looking forward to seeing what you do with your future and maybe you'll end up back at Moravian someday. We never know, I guess. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions, you can feel free to submit them in the chat and Justin will get us started with getting answers to them. Justin, do we have any in there right now? We do not, Amanda. Hmm. Sometimes it takes a few minutes, so. Don't, nobody be shy. I'll start one off for uh, both of you, actually, for Victoria and Gabby. What advice would you have for a student who might just be coming to Moravian as a freshman? What would you tell them? Um, I would probably tell them to be open to change and don't keep your head, so, don't keep your blinders on. Um, make sure you take a look around and look at all the opportunities that are there, even if you don't think you'll like them. I mean, I never thought that I would like research. I was just going to stick in school, get good grades, and that was the plan. But I went to a, uh, a meeting and they presented all their work and I loved it. So just be open to opportunities. Um, I think I would say the best advice that I could give would be, um, if something piques your interest, pursue that. Um, for me, the most um, transformative thing for me was that I had that one interest from that one project I did in class my first semester and it turned into all this other really awesome stuff. So sometimes all it can take is one thing that you're kind of like, hmm, I kind of want to look more into that, but I'm not really sure how to do it. Definitely reach out to you know faculty members, friends, anyone who you can think of and someone will find a way to connect you with the right people and you'll be able to kind of pursue that um and you never know what it could lead to so great kind of an extension uh to that question for both of you you know looking back on your freshman year did you ever think that you would be a part of the incredible research that you've gotten you know the chance to be a part of um with the resources that you know we have at moravian I guess I'll go first. Um, no, I always made the joke like, oh, one day I'm going to cure cancer. And here I am working on cancer research, I guess, if you want to call it. Um, so it's it's incredible and I love it. Um, so I never thought that I would be doing this and be so passionate and really love what I'm doing. So yeah, freshman me would probably be very shocked at senior me. Um, 
my answer is pretty similar. When I started college, um, I didn't even have any familiarity with the field of study that, did I not unmute myself? Yes, I did, okay. Um, I had no familiarity at all with the field of study that um, I now am so passionate about. Um, what I knew of rhetoric was like ethos, pathos, and logos, and that's it. And um, I know now that it's a lot more than that. So um, yeah, I definitely had no idea that this is where I was going to be headed, but um, now at this point, I can't imagine it happening any other way, so. Fantastic, thank you both. Anyone else have any questions for Gabby or Victoria? I'll pose a question. <laughs> Um, you know, being that you're going to be graduating in a, in a few weeks, what's that one thing that you're going to miss about being a part of the Moravian community on a day in day out basis? You know, what's that one thing um, that makes Moravian Moravian? Mine is kind of simple, I guess. Everyone, for the most part, is really friendly. When you're walking around, even if you don't know somebody, they'll smile at you. Um, everyone's just really nice and welcoming for the most part. I mean, of course, there's a couple exceptions, but I really like that warm atmosphere that Moravian has. Um, I would say, and, and I mean, I wasn't on campus a lot this year um, for obvious reasons, but um, for my previous three years at Mar Moravian, I really loved, and I'm going to miss more than anything, spending time in the Writing Center um, I didn't work as a writing center tutor, but I was the writing at Moravian program student assistant and I had my little desk in there. Um, and I loved um, getting to see tutoring sessions going on and getting to talk with other writing center tutors and my advisors offices were both right there. So um, the WAM team would have meetings a lot and I'm going to miss, you know, collaborating with those people and seeing them all the time. Um, and I think that feeling of community with like-minded people is the number one thing that I'm gonna miss when I graduate. Great, thank you. Can you talk, can you both talk a little bit about how this year with COVID being in the mix, um, you know, how is it different dealing with your studies? For me, a lot of my classes beforehand, they were obviously in person. Um, I would even say it's been a very adaptable situation for the most part, at least for me. Um, last semester in the fall, all of my classes were online and I even TA'd online, which was an interesting experience. Um, but then moving into this spring semester, I've had the opportunity to go into more hybrid classes. So I have the chance to go into school if I want to. Um, a lot more of my labs are in person, which is a lot beneficial. I mean, it's hard to do a lab over Zoom, um, but it's been a lot of screen time and learning that difference between the screen time is for work and the screen time is to relax. So it's been a balance, but I think over the year, it's been transitioning slowly back to normal, at least for me. Um. I think for me, so all of my classes were online the entire year. Um, since I'm an English major, you don't need to be in person to talk about books. Um, but I think in terms of my research, I didn't expect it to have as much of an effect as it did. Um, you know, because the stuff that I do is all on my laptop doing data analysis. I'm, I'm not really like, the, the type of research that I do doesn't really involve like going into the field anywhere. I don't do interviews, I don't do that sort of thing. So I didn't really expect it to have that much of an impact, but um, throughout the year, I noticed how it really is kind of like um, complicated and a little frustrating sometimes to be doing everything on the computer, especially with emailing. Um, it, it's, it was a lot easier when we were on campus and you could set up a meeting with somebody or stop by their office. And like, um, especially because for my research this year, I was working with institutional data and um it was hard going through like different channels to try and 
quick get what I needed um, and to do that over email. And then also um, I tried to collect survey data for my research this year. And um, under normal circumstances, we could have had like, um, I wanted survey data from first year writing students. So in normal years, I could have had um, the writing fellows take the survey, distribute it in class and have students fill it out there. Um, but obviously that was not the case this year. So my survey was not as successful. Um, so just, you know, little things like that, trying to communicate over the internet and, and do everything that way, um, definitely had more of an impact than I expected, but um, made it work. What do you feel is your favorite takeaway moment at Moravian that you'll kind of always remember? If there is one. <laughs> I don't know if there's like one specific one. Like for me too, I was never on campus for all of those like big midnight dinners or breakfasts, I think they were. Um, I wasn't really involved in sports, so I didn't really go to games. Um, for me, all my big experiences were in the labs. They were uh, the moment I got my protein purified and it was me and my advisor and one of my lab mates and we were all there and it was a really great experience. Or when we found out that our protein worked, it just worked because you never know if it will. Um, so it was moments like that that I really remember and we all just kind of bonded over this one thing that probably the rest of the world doesn't care about, but we do and it was really exciting for that one moment. Uh, so I guess little moments like that were pretty, pretty big things for me. Um, I would say that for me, I actually think that I had that moment today when I submitted my thesis um, because it was just such a um, long and, and um, taxing process in a good way. <laughs> you know, I love the work that I do, but um, obviously it was a bit of a daunting task to, to approach a project that big. And um, for me, it was... Um, kind of, uh, I don't wanna say made worse, but made more intense by um, the fact that I received the second half of my data a week ago. Um, so I, I kind of, um, the crunch time was, was very real for me. And um, when I finally submitted my thesis today, it was just like, it was a bit anticlimactic since I was sitting alone in my living room, but, um, it was still just one of those moments of like immense pride and, and feeling very accomplished and feeling like um, I was really active and doing important work throughout my college career. And this was kind of like the culmination of that, so. Does anyone else have any last minute questions? And I'm going to put my contact information in the chat. So if you'd like to send me um, any questions that you have after tonight's presentation, I'll be happy to connect with both Gabby and Victoria and get those questions answered for you. Okay. So thank you to everyone um, for joining tonight. Special thanks to Victoria and Gabby, uh, your great determination and the leadership capabilities that you've learned during your time here at Moravian. I'm sure we'll definitely accelerate the opportunities as you begin to grow within your respective careers and fields, uh, much the same as Benigna um, experienced when she founded the college. I want to also take the time to thank several of my colleagues, a part of the call here this evening, Amanda, uh, Amanda, Director of Alumni Engagement, Marissa Zondag, for those of you who participated in last night's presentation, our Leadership Gift Officer for Women Philanthropy, and finally, Matt Nesto, uh, my colleague over in Alumni Engagement, Assistant Director of Student and Young Alumni Engagement, who manages and really supports our efforts of growing our student engagement initiatives here at the college. Uh, this evening's presentation will be available on the Founders Day webpage within the next week, uh, as well as all of our other programming this week. This concludes our Founders Day program for this year, and we eagerly await next year's 280th Founders Day program uh, when we will be able to host the event on campus again.
for those of you that have joined us each night throughout the week, thank you once again for your support of virtual engagement efforts and events during this challenging time. Uh, we hope that all of you enjoyed this year's program offerings and that you continue to remain healthy and well in the weeks and months to come. Have a great rest of your evening and go Hounds.